What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Mike Sasser, boudoir photographer in Los Angeles, California. And if this is your first time to the channel, where have you been all my life? So recently I was in Hawaii and I knew that I wanted to do a few shoots outside. Only problem was I hadn't really spent that much time there. So I didn't know where the best places were to shoot. So I wanted to take a little time in this video to show you guys how I found those locations. Then I'm gonna bring you with me for some behind the scenes on the session and give you some tips on shooting outdoor portraits, some varying lighting conditions, some posing. So let's do this thing. So I had some criteria of what I was looking for with this location to shoot at. The first is that there wasn't a ton of tourists. I wanted something with a beautiful view. I was looking for something that didn't take us an hour to drive to, an hour to drive back. And also, once we got there, I didn't want to have to hike for an hour and then hike for an hour back. I think, I think that means I'm high maintenance. First place I recommend that you look when you're trying to find a location is Google. When I was in middle school, before I knew what Google was, I asked a friend, you know, what's Google? And he says, Google is God. <laughs> and that may not be true, but it's a good place to start your search. I was searching for scenic spots and easy hikes and best places in Hawaii to shoot. There may even be some articles of photographers who have traveled somewhere and put together a photo list of where they recommend you go take the best pictures. The next tip is just to ask someone who lives there. You could post in a local photography Facebook group, or you can ask a person, a real life person. So for me, that was the behind the scenes videographer, Albin, who crushed it on this location. Okay, so we made it to our first spot. And my pro tip for figuring out where you're gonna shoot if you wanna shoot out and about, not in the place you are, is ask the locals. <laughs> so if they're into photography, if you find somebody that, um, that shoots a lot, they will likely have a couple favorite spots to shoot. He told me a spot between a touristy lighthouse lookout that I had been to before and like a parking lot lookout that also had a lot of tourists. He said if we hike up a little bit from the parking lot in between that and the lighthouse, it should be a good spot. And so to get a better idea of what that would look like, it brings us to our third tip, which is to use a 3D map like Google Earth or like Apple Maps. The 3D Maps feature is amazing at getting an idea of what to expect. So take a scroll around, see if that place is gonna work. It looks like this is gonna be perfect. It's got a great view. It's not a long hike, but it's still far away from tourists and I can probably do it in flip-flops. So let's get out and shoot. Mostly filming from like ankles up. Okay. Ankles up. Okay, so that wind is so loud and annoying, I am just gonna tell you what was going on in my head. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we did was we left her flip-flops on because it's pretty uncomfortable, and then I had her take her hair tie off because those always get in pictures and it always messes things up. It was also pretty cloudy towards the beginning, so I've got her nose pointed to where the sun would be for the main light source. You can see that there's a little directional light coming from the right, and then there's a lot of light coming from behind her, which is the open area where the ocean is. I'm using these two light sources to create the photo that I want. And then lastly, I'm adding some movement. So I'm having her move her hands and this will give me variety in my pictures. It'll give her something to do and it will make her look much more comfortable. Never be afraid to actually show your model what it is you want her to do. Sometimes things get lost in translation. Sometimes you're just having a hard time conveying what it is you're looking for. Don't be afraid to strike a pose. Now, I really liked this shot that we were getting, but she has her weight on her back hip, which sometimes can be the more flattering shot. But I had her switch her weight into her front hip and you can see a huge difference, even though it's just a tiny shift. So the next shot I wanted to do would include a little bit more scenery of where we were. The first thing I had her do was turn to face to the side with the sun coming from behind her. After that, I gave her a few of the different instructions that I wanted her to do so I wouldn't have to constantly be showing her the different poses while I was taking the pictures. But with all the wind and the scenery and the chaos, I forgot that her flip flops were still on and so unfortunately those are in the picture. So up until now, pretty much this whole shoot had been pretty cloudy. You can see a little bit of the sun is starting to peak up and now it's really coming through. So I rushed like crazy to try and get just a whole variety of shots. So I got some shots that were side lit with the sun coming completely across the frame and hitting her shoulder. 
anytime you have a glimmer of something special, in this case the sun, go, go, go. Don't stop shooting until that light goes away because you don't know if it's going to disappear at any moment. By the time you guys are done figuring out the next shot, it could already be gone. So I switched to get some shots that were front lit. I went around to where the sun was at my back and tried to get a lot of really, really beautiful deep colors. And then I ran around to the other side to get that rim light, that halo light that is so beautiful. So that wraps up the first location. The next spot is a spot called Sandy Beach. It's a place that I discovered kind of while wandering around the island. One negative is that it's on the east side, so I knew the sun was going to be setting behind the mountains. Ironically, Sandy Beach had this really beautiful rock section that nobody ever seemed to be at. This meant that we could shoot what we wanted and wouldn't have anybody getting in the way with tourists walking by or asking questions or being distracting. And luckily, it was a gorgeous sunset to shoot. Okay, so we are at Sandy Beach. Look at this, there's nobody here. Why is there nobody here this beautiful day? So we've now found the next spot um, because I wanna get some water and ocean. We still won't have any direct sun, but we're gonna get some sweet indirect light shots. Right? Yes. <laughs> You're hired. You can be my hype, hype man. This is Alvin, he's rocking the behind the scenes for us today like a pro. <laughs> what do you think so far? How are we doing? Uh, so far, everything looks awesome. Oh, good. Really good. No, he, he's my new hype man. <laughs> Yo, I don't know about that. <laughs> it was good while it lasted, Monica. I like the challenge. <laughs> so unless you're shooting in a really tiny closet or something, I always like to start a new location with a walking set. Again, this will just get you a little bit more variety and it always relaxes the model a bit. And just to give her hands something to do, I asked her to play with the tassels on her swim top. Let's have you tiptoe as you're kind of walking down. So the striking poses are going to be when one foot is after the other and your real tiptoes on both on both toes. I see a lot of photographers get stuck shooting in the same direction the whole shoot. Sometimes if the light is really good one way, it could be even better the other direction. Damn. <laughs> All right, so that was a great silhouette shot, but as the sun started to get more and more ridiculous, I wanted to capture something that would show the landscape, you know, both her and the sky together. So the first thing I did was I made sure that I had the pose exactly how I wanted it. Then I started to shoot underexposed. Digital cameras hold all of their detail in the shadows. So I wanted to shoot darker than I needed to so I could bring up the shadows in Lightroom. So here is the original straight out of camera picture with absolutely no editing. So let's go through and I'll show you how I would edit this picture in Lightroom. So the first thing we're gonna do is apply this preset that I've been working on for you guys and then we are going to warm up the picture a little bit. So you can see that the top half of the picture is super bright and the bottom half of the picture is super dark. You could pull up the shadows, but I find when there's something as, as crisp as this horizon line, I like to use the gradient tool instead and then increase the exposure to my liking. Okay, let's pull the highlights down so we can get a little bit more of those clouds back. I absolutely love that. Uh, this all looks really amazing. Her face is a little bit dark, so I'm going to use the radial tool with a little increased exposure. And watch what happens when I just go over her face. Just going to brighten up her face just a touch. Just like that. And that's how you can make her really, really pop. So let me know what you think of this new format. Do you like it better when I just go ahead and run through the whole shoot with the model and then take some time afterwards to break it down for you guys? Or do you like it when I stop during the shoot and address the camera and explain things as I'm going? Thank you so much for always watching. I have some of the best subs on YouTube and I know that because I hear it and how grateful you are in the comments and I am grateful for that. So until next time, get out there, set up a shoot, try something new, post it on Instagram and use the hashtag keeping it sassy so I can see it and I will see you guys next time. What's up guys? We're gonna give you some tips on outdoor portraits, on shooting outdoor portraits, <laughs> on shooting outdoor portraits. Just looking for plays with a few different criteria. The next tip is to ask somebody who the next tip is to ask somebody who lives there so you could post in a photo. The next tip is just to ask somebody who lives there. Let's do this. Bye.